So tonight I'm going to update you on some long-term testing I've been doing on several products I've reviewed recently. Uh, a lot of you have been asking for this, so I've picked out some of the products that I feel like are worthy of telling you about that uh, a couple you might want to really pay attention to because there's a couple I'm not really recommending right now. And I'm also going to give you my thoughts on this new tip over protection that Max McAllister over at Traction is working on. Give you some thoughts on that as well. And of course, it's crown and comment, so I've got to cover your comments and respond to the things that you've said to me over the past month. I've got my Crown Royal, my favorite adult beverage. I advise you to get yours, whether it's a soda, water, tea, or something a little stronger like me. I've got my MacBook Pro sitting here with all of the questions that I've picked out or comments that I've picked out. So it's time to get started. And welcome to yet another episode of Crown and Comments with your host and resident gold wing guru, the one, the only, Cruise Man. Brought to you by Cruise Man's Garage Honda Goldwing Maintenance Videos. Okay, forgive me for making notes. I, I have some notes here I'm going to refer to because I have several different things I want to talk about as far as products that I have featured on the channel recently. And I want to give you an update on now that I've used these things for quite some time, I want you to know a little bit more about, you know, what I think of them. The first one is, for, and first of all, I'm going to put links to all of these products, with maybe a couple of exceptions, down in the uh, description of the video, so you don't have to worry about that right now. Just sit back and relax and listen to this rant. Now, I've, I've kind of split these items up into three different categories. There are the things that I have been using that I don't really feel like could be any better. I mean, I really feel like they... Are great the way they are. There are some products that I still use, will continue to use, but I feel like they could use a little improvement. There's there's some little tweaks they could use, but not anything so serious that I would stop using them. And then there's uh, one product in particular that I would say is pretty much a fail, and we'll talk more about that. Uh, as I get to the end. I'm going to leave that one to the end. Okay, here are the products I've been using that I really don't think could be much better. And the first one are the Icon Boots that I reviewed not too long ago. I've probably been using this these, uh, I don't know, three or four months now, maybe even longer. Uh, I really love them. I mean, they're very comfortable. I know several of you have told me that you've ordered these boots and you think they're the most comfortable boots you've ever had. And I agree. I just, I love that boa uh, thing on the front to tighten up the boots. Uh, in fact, I'm considering or ordering a second pair. Uh, they make these in three colors. I've got the gray. They make them in a kind of a nice looking brown, which I'm not usually a brown guy, but uh, they're pretty cool looking. And then they also make them in black. So Put your vote in down below. Do you think I should get the black or the brown if I order another pair of those Icon boots? Okay, that's the first thing. The next thing is the traction engine case guard. Now, I've been using this traction uh, at the, on the bottom of the motorcycle for quite some time, more than a year, and it has held up very well. It's pretty easy to take off. I've got a little technique I use to take it off for oil changes. I put a little uh, scissor jack under it and then drop it down. It's just really easy. I think I made a video on that for you. Super neat. Uh, I really feel like it offers uh, superb protection. There's some other engine guards and belly pans out there on the market. And I'm sure they're all good. Anything's better than nothing. But uh, this traction engine case guard is kind of next level. It's a little more expensive. But, uh, you know, it's an American company. They're made here in America, and I just really think it's a good product. The other thing from Traction that I'm using that I really like, and I kind of forgot about this until I just happened to, uh, to stumble onto my old video the other day, and that is this little dipstick extender. You know, it's not a big deal, but it's, and it's very cheap. Go ahead and order one. It's so much easier to get that dipstick out to check your oil, especially if your engine's hot. 
It's just uh, a great little tool. I think they're 25 bucks. It's well worth it. Uh, I just uh, ordered today a whole bunch of little stuff from Traction, and I'm going to be doing a video on these small things that Traction makes, and uh, I'll update you on, on that when they come in. Uh, the other is the saddle, uh, the Show Chrome saddlebag organizers. Uh, these go in each the left and the right saddlebag. I really, really do like these. I've been using them now for quite some time. And what I really like about them is they're very easy to take out because they go in with Velcro. So if you go to a hotel and you have things in there that you need to take in your room with you, you just rip them out with the Velcro, take them in the hotel room, next day put them back in. Very simple. Let me tell you about the Fantic tire, the, the X8 Apex. I think it's called the X8 Apex, the tire inflator. I love this thing. I bet I've used it a dozen times to air up my tires. It's very compact. It's very portable. It fits. I keep it in my left saddlebag. Uh, I charge it up about once every six months. I've never had it go dead on me. In fact, uh, the last time I charged it, I think it had been about six months, and it still had like 85% charge. So it keeps its charge pretty well. I get no less than probably two emails a week from other companies, mostly Chinese companies, that want me to review and do a video for their tire inflators. And there's no reason for me to. I'm so happy with this Fantic that I'm just going to keep using it. I'm sure there's other good ones out there on the market. And I have tested a couple of other ones. And I had one, I think I told you the story, that they actually paid me to make a video and sent me the unit, and it started smoking after about 10 minutes. And I sent them their money back and said, no thanks, threw it away. That was the end of that. The TCMT oil drain pan. I've used this. It's a low-profile plastic drain pan for changing your oil, and it easily fits under the motorcycle. I've used this probably three times and I've really, I really like it. I think it's a great product. It's very inexpensive. I think they're $30, and uh, I still highly recommend it. Now, here are some things I really love, but I think they need a little tweaking. Uh, the Senna Impulse helmet, some of you have seen my reviews of that. I think I even did an extended review of it once, and it's comfortable. I have no problem with the comfort of the helmet. I love the sound quality. Uh, it gets a lot of volume through the speakers in the helmet. Uh, my my main issue with the helmet is they need to go to a USB-C connector instead of that MagSafe connector they've got on the underside. It's just, that's, that's my biggest issue. I'd prefer the charging port to be on the side, on the left side of the helmet, right underneath uh, where the buttons are. Other than that, it pairs good. It has good battery life. Uh, I wish it had a replaceable battery. I don't like the fact that when the communicator dies, the battery dies, you basically have to get a new helmet. That seems a little bit expensive to me. Vantrue dash cam. A lot of you, several of you have ordered this Vantrue dash cam after my uh, initial review, and it's been working great. I've had no issues with it. Uh, but I was talking to Robert the other day, Robert White, some of you know him, and he has one also. He ordered one, put one on his bike, and we were talking about the remote control, which I just have kind of zip tied to my right hand control unit. And I'm thinking I'm just going to get rid of it. I'm just going to put it under the seat, or uh, I may end up mounting the whole system in my left saddlebag. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet, but that's a possibility, uh, just to kind of free up space under my seat. And if I do remount this whole thing, I'll obviously make a video about it and bore you to death with that. I love the dash cam. Uh, I don't still understand why you have to reformat the little SD card every couple of weeks, but there's nothing I use that remote control for that you can't do with the app, and I would rather use the app. I don't think I've ever used the remote control. So why have it up there? Why have to route the cable up to underneath, you know, to the handlebars and all that? And it's kind of in the way. So I think I'm just going to put it under the seat and get rid of it for now and not even use the remote control because I could care less about the remote control. The last thing that I like 
but this is kind of a big one, um, and that is the Skosh Power Up 700 Jump Starter. I know a lot of you have bought this on my recommendation. Somebody sent me a message the other day and asked me where they could find the Quick Connect Kit, because that was the big selling point of this Skosh uh, Power Up connector or a jump starter is it had this quick connect that you could also connect to a battery tender. So you basically don't have to take the side cover off and hook up jumper cables to, to jump start your battery. You can do it from this cable they provide you. Well, I'm sorry to report that Skosh no longer manufactures or offers that quick connect kit. So now I've got to rethink things because there are still there are a couple of companies out there not products I've reviewed but there are a couple of companies that do make quick connect kits for their jump starters so as it is right now I think it's a good jump starter I don't have a problem with the skosh as a jump starter I'm personally going to order the little battery terminal extender from Max Attraction to put on the positive terminal, the battery, so that if I have to use the jumper cables in the future, I can. I'm okay because I've still got the Quick Connect kit for my Skosh. But if you just want to get another jump starter, there's no real compelling reason now to get the Skosh without that uh, Quick Connect kit. That was the main. That was the main selling point. If you have a different kind of jump starter and you need to use the little jumper cables, Max makes a little uh, positive terminal extender. It's like a bolt that sticks out to make it easier to get that red uh, positive uh, jump starter cable attached to your battery. The ground is easy to get to, but the, the positive one is kind of hard to reach. It's so far back under the, the saddlebag. So uh, I, you know, check that out. So I ordered one today, so I'm gonna I'll have that and I'll show you an installation on it and everything. I think Max probably has one on his channel. Okay, now as far as a fail, you might remember a few months ago, uh, Robert brought his 2023 Goldwing over and we installed those upper or actually upper and lower air deflectors on his motorcycle from Panicle. Robert came over the other day. We were doing another installation and shooting a little video. And he said he's probably going to take them off, the uppers off. The lowers are fine. The lowers work great. Okay, I'm here with Robert White. And a while back, we installed these upper and lower air deflectors on his 2023 Goldwing. And, uh, okay, it's been, how long has it been? Oh, several months. I want to say it's been four or five months since we put these on. Uh, we put on the uppers and the lowers here. And, you know, we had a difficult time getting this one on. And we finally got it tight and thought it was going to be okay. But I got to tell you, over time, I'm constantly having to try to retighten that. And it never really stays. If you can come over here and look, when it moves, it moves this whole piece. I just cannot get it tight enough. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not sure I'm going to keep these on. Um, I just, it's a little loose. <laughs> so right now, I'm not going to recommend those upper air deflectors from Panicle. Robert still seems to be happy with the lower air deflectors, but uh, so for long-term review, I'd have to say that's a fail. My other fail is, and it's not because of my personal experience, it's just because of some things I've seen online, and that is the tie-down brackets from Gold Strike that mount to the front of your, kind of the front of your engine, up near the engine there on your frame, actually. Um, I'm going to take mine off. The first thing is they make it difficult for that fog light cover to fit back on correctly. They kind of get in the way. And I've seen a couple of reports where people say they used these tie downs and they ended up getting a crack in their frame. Um, I can't swear to that. It's never happened to me. I've never had that problem. But I figure why take the risk? So I'm going to remove the tie down brackets from Gold Strike, and I'll probably take that video down. And uh, I, haven't, I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to take the Panicle video down or not as far as the air deflectors. But those are the two products that were the fails. One more break. When we come back, I'm going to talk to you what I think about Max McAllister's tip over protection. 
and a couple of new tools he's working on. I've been watching some of his videos, and we'll get into that as soon as we get back. Well, I'm, I'm down about a finger, so I'm getting there. Welcome back to Crown and Comments with Cruise Man, September 2023. And right now, I want to talk to you a little bit about Max's. I've been watching Max McAllister's videos on this tip over protection. Uh, because, and it's a highly anticipated product he's been working on for a long time. And nobody, it's not anything like what we thought it was going to be. I think everybody thought it was going to be some kind of bars, you know, coming out around the fog lights. So the bike tips over and rest on those bars. I was, that's what I was expecting. In fact, I didn't even see the, when he did his first video where he actually showed the tip over protection without saying anything about it. And Robert White caught it. He saw it in the video and told me about it. Then I went back and rewatched the video. I said, oh, yeah, there it is. Yeah, it's easy to see. It was a brilliant marketing strategy because it was so blended in to the look of the bike. You don't even notice it unless you're looking for it, which was really genius design. And like Max said in one of his videos, his objective is to save you money. If your bike does a, a tip over where it goes all the way over and you know, smushes the mirror. Uh, it can scratch your saddlebag lid. And those are expensive parts to replace or to have repaired or repainted. So I think you're you're probably looking at $700 to $1,000 with labor uh, if you did have a tip, an unassisted tip over. By that, I mean, let's you know, say your bike's in the parking lot and a big gust of wind hits and blows the bike all the way over and it goes past the Honda tip over bars up onto the mirrors and maybe hits your handlebar end, that little end uh, piece on your handlebar, and it's also going to hit your saddlebag lid. So Max has ingeniously designed these, uh, oh, I guess they're like a rubber uh, that goes on the mirrors, the mirror housing, and on the saddlebag lid. And he's done quite a bit of testing. He's been very transparent and upfront about how he's testing these and what the issues have been. And I've been getting a lot of emails and a lot of questions about these this tip over protection and what do I think of it. And uh, I think it's a brilliant idea. I think it, number one, the, the thing I like about it the most is that it fits the look of the bike. It doesn't detract from the look of the bike. I've seen other tip over bars that you can order aftermarket. I've got some sitting out in the garage that I won't review. We've talked about why in the past. I'm not going to get into it tonight. They really are ugly. They stick out beyond the fog lights. It's questionable as to how much force that if the bike rolls over on those, will it cause damage to other parts of the motorcycle? We don't really know because nobody really tests it that much. But uh, to Max's credit, you know, he's sacrificing his bike by just throwing it over on the side and seeing what happens. And um, I'm looking forward to getting a set of these in here as soon as I can. And once I do, I will review these for you and I'll give you an honest review. You know, I'll, you know I think most of you know I like Max. I've known him for years. Uh, he rebuilt the suspension on my 2007 Goldwing. Loved it. And uh, I've had I've had good luck with pretty much everything I've ever had from traction, as far as I can remember. So I am pretty excited to see this. I think it's a pretty revolutionary idea. I and I I definitely will put. I know I'll put the mirror guards on my bike, and I'll probably put the saddlebag guards on as well. I guess I kind of have to if I'm going to review them, don't I? I've only dropped my bike one time. And it was in my garage, and it was a controlled drop. It wasn't something like Max did, where he basically just throws the bike over and it tips all the way over. Mine, the engine guard and the saddlebag guards did stop the bike. It, it landed on the guards. But I was sitting on the bike. I thought I had the kickstand down in my garage, and I didn't. 
And when I let the bike go, and if you've ever done this before, you know, once it gets past a certain point, you ain't going to save it. You might as well just bail off and let it go. But I'm sure I slowed down the fall, and it did fall on the engine guard and the saddlebag guard. Didn't even really damage them. There's a little bit of scratching on the bottom of the guard, but you know, not noticeable. It didn't hit the mirrors, didn't hit the saddlebag, did no real damage. So from that perspective, I was very fortunate. Max also is coming out with some tools to repair any potential damage that comes from one of these drops. And I saw one of them demoed on his website last night where you uh, where you go to the mirror, uh, rear view mirror mounting in the, the little subframe and you bolt in this little tool and then you get a lever and you kind of bend it back out manually. Uh, I think it's a great idea. I'm not sure how I feel about using a socket or ratchet extension to do that. Um, I think if you have Snap-on or Mac Tools or any or even Husky, some really reputable brand, you might be okay. I'd be afraid of buying a $5 Harbor Freight extension. You know, I don't know that these things are really tested uh, for that kind of tensile strength to put on a uh, extension. They're really more for twisting, not for to use as a lever. But, you know, I will, I will uh, concede to Max's expertise. He must know what he's talking about. He did it, and he even put two together and did it. Um, so I, you know, I don't think it's going to be a problem. I just, I would advise you to probably have a, a, a decent quality tool <laughs> for doing that. If you get a really, really cheap tool, uh, that could break. So I, I, boy, that'd be a, that'd be a not good. I don't think it would happen, but you know me, I'm paranoid. So what the hell? I, I love the idea of the tool. I think it's a great idea because it's going to save a ton of money. Uh, from having a dealer replace those uh, that subframe is a lot of work involved in taking all the parts off to replace that subframe for the rearview mirror. Now he has another tool he's working on for the engine guard. Get if it gets bent, I'm anxious to see that as well. So anyway, uh, hats off to Max for coming up with these tools and these. Uh, a tip over protection. I think it's something that's been needed. I'm looking forward to seeing it, and as soon as I get it in here, I'll do a review. And when we come back, your comments and my responses on Crown and Comments. Well, welcome back to Crown and Comments, September 2023, and I have your comments right here in front of me, and I'm just going to go through them real quick, one at a time, give you a quick response, let you know. Um, first one, let me get down here to the bottom. This is from Road Glide. Some of you know Road Glide. He's local, actually. He's here in this area, and uh, he met us for breakfast one day over in Arlington, and he's talking about the Show Chrome... Uh, the new platinum backrest, or the video I did for that. He said, looks really nice. Can I use the mounting bracket from the previous model of backrest? And the, and, and, uh, the answer is yes, you can. Uh, it, it is identical. The mounting system is identical to the previous show chrome or the other show chrome backrest for the 2018 plus. So yes, you can use that. Uh, this is from Jay. I'm not going to get into the whole name there. Uh, this is on the Sirius XM video I did two or three years ago, talking about it being a scam. Bravo. Great vid, Cruiseman. I love it. Thanks for the headache avoidance. You know, in that video, I was talking about Sirius XM. I'd been a subscriber for many years, and when I decided to cancel. It was such a pain. I, sp I think I spent 45, I don't remember how long I spent, a long time, 30, 45 minutes on the phone. It's almost impossible to cancel the service. And uh, it, it was so bad that I finally decided, you know what, this is not right. They should have a way online where you can cancel your service without having to call on the phone 
and go through the upsell and the sales pitch and all the stuff they do. And, uh, you know, by just not having a, what I would consider to be a legitimate, common sense way of canceling your account or suspending your account, um, it's cost them a lot of customers. I bet I've had 50 or 60 people with text or uh, comments just like this that, are, that, that either canceled their serious subscription or they have not signed up because of my video. At least 50. And those are just the people that have told me about it. I'm sure there's probably hundreds of people that have avoided Sirius XM. And, and so that's what it costs them. Companies can't get away with this crap in the days of social media that we live in right now. It's just too easy to see videos of people complaining about things. And uh, you just can't get away with it. You just can't. So anyway, thank you, Terry. That was from, I'm sorry, that was from Jay. The next one's from Terry, Terry Herbert. Uh, this was on one of my behind the scenes videos. He says, what do you use to clean the black surface on the side of the bike to keep the color? I'm thinking he means to keep the black from fading. I don't use anything special. I just use what I use to wash the bike, just regular detergent, you know, the, the car wash that I use. Now, I don't leave the bike sitting out in the sun for long periods of time, and UV rays are what really tear up that, that flat black plastic. It causes it to fade over time and kind of look bleached out. Uh, there are some products out there that will help to restore that black finish. Uh, let's see. This is from Tracy Ratzliff. Do you have a video showing what plastics to remove in order to get access to install the voltage meter slash USB ports? I had a video where I did a installation of a USB port on my motorcycle. And but I didn't show removing all the parts. I just showed the installation of, you know, into the shelter. The answer is yes. Uh, my Goldwing maintenance videos, I do have videos that show specifically how to remove. You basically have to remove the middle cowl on the left side. You have to remove the uh, outer air deflector on the left side. You have to remove the, the inner cowl on the, on the left side, unless you've left out the little push pin like I recommend people do. But my maintenance videos do cover all those parts and many, many more. There's 80 different videos. So check them out. Uh, Bobby Fowler, I dropped a nut down the fork shaft. We talked about that recently, too. I taped a small magnet to a zip tie, fished it down, and was able to retrieve the nut. Your use of zip ties for fishing around wiring gave me the idea. Uh, well, Bobby, you know... As I said in my video, where I think I was installing those little side marker lights from Show Chrome, uh, I consider myself to be a professional. I've never dropped a nut or a bolt down into the shelter of a motorcycle. Liar! 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 Well, that's a uh, that's just a rookie mistake. And uh, but if I did, and if I ever do. I don't think I will, but if I ever do, I will use your technique. That's I'm surprised I didn't think of that. That's actually a pretty good idea. Um, but, you know, being a professional, uh, I, I would never uh, do anything like that. Liar! This is from Unsul Sine. This is on the video that I did on the Sirius XM, still from two or three years ago. And he said, you lost all credibility when you can't control your phone and Siri. Um, I think I replied to this, and my reply was, I didn't know I had any credibility to begin with. So, wow, thank you. Guess you can't lose credibility if you don't have any. And Ken Johnson says, so does the dash cam save the files in MP4, MOV, or some other format? 
uh, Ken, they are MP4 files. That's the Vantrue dash cam. I don't know what the other ones save as, but MP4 is pretty standard. From Ron Shob, Shob or Shoby Cruise Man, where do I find the rear view side mirror? He said mirrors, but I think he means mirrors. With the blinkers in the front and the back. Thanks. The mirrors come from Muth Mirror. Uh, you can order those from wingstuff.com. I love them. They're one of the best things I've added to the motorcycle. I just love, I've had them on, I think I've had them on every Goldwing I've owned. I just love Muth Mirrors with the little signals in them. As far as on the front of the uh, rearview mirrors, those lights come from add-on accessories. And I got those from Pathfinder LED. They sell add-on accessories, and they may also have them at wingstuff.com. You could do a search for add-on accessories. It's ADD-ON, and they may have them on Wingstuff as well. I'm not sure if they sell add-on or not. Gary Branson, I purchased my wing used and the code was not provided. He's talking about for the smart key. How do I retrieve that number? It's not easy. I believe there's a number you can call at Honda, a customer service number. And I think if you give them your VIN number, and they may do some other checks along the way, but I believe they can retrieve the code for that smart key. This is a common issue with people buying used motorcycles. Uh, I'm going to actually update my used buying guide to make sure to mention if you buy a used 2018 or later, make sure you ask the owner or the dealer for that code and that uh, QR code and the number for the smart key. Because without it, you have no way to get your into your bike to start in case of an emergency. So I will make sure to update that video not too, you know, in the not too distant future so that he'll have that. But I think if you contact Honda, they can get that for you. You just have to give them the VIN number, maybe some other information, and make sure that you are who you say you are and that you do own the bike. Uh, David Bucci says, Chris, will they make the 2018 to 2020 version? This is about the GT Marvel trunk light because it's designed for the 2021 to 2023 model or later, assuming Honda didn't change the trunk. And uh, David, I don't know. I don't know if Show Chrome has that planned or not. I will pass this on to them to let them know you're interested. And by the way, if any of you out there have a 2018 to 2020, and you would like something like that GT Marvel trunk light for your motorcycle to fit your bike, because it has a smaller trunk, uh, put it in the comments down below, and I'll pass that information on to Show Chrome and let them know what, how much interest there is in this. This is on the brake-free brake light, helmet light. James says, Cruise Man, is it normal to feel some slight movement of the brake-free when attached to the helmet? Yeah, it can wiggle a little bit. There's a little bit of slop in there between the back of the brake-free and the mount on the helmet. Not much, but, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch, it'll wobble a little. I think probably to make it easier to get onto the mount, it doesn't affect the performance of it at all. It's not like it's back there shaking the whole time. It's, it's minimal. So, yes, I don't think that's abnormal if it's like mine. Both of mine do the same thing, and, you know, it's just not a big deal. And I'm ending on the high note for some of you. Anthony J. Flores says, this was on my video where I was showing you how to put the motorcycle on the center stand. Here, I took my time. I took the time to set my camera up on the tripod and go out and, and to try to help people. You know, I'm a, I'm a selfless giver. But J Anthony J. Flores says, thanks, Gramps. I guess he's implying I'm old. Um, you know, I don't have any kids. I'm not a grandfather. I don't have kids. I don't have grandkids that I know of. There might be some out there I don't know about. But none that I have claimed or claimed me, nor would they, nor would I. 
So anyway, with that said, that's the last of the comments. And I want to thank you for joining me tonight. As always, if you liked this video, do me a favor. Give it a thumbs up. Put your comments in down below. Thanks for joining me. Remember what I always say, ride often, but ride safe.